perspective, tax administration, uh, and broader economic uh, concern. Uh, I look forward to uh, gaining insights from proponents, uh, those who may not be uh, supportive, and the those who will have to administer the program. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Others? Anyone, anyone else want to make any opening comments? Okay. Seeing none, we're going to invite the LAO represent, representatives to come forward. Good afternoon, chairs, members. My name is Carolyn Chu from the Legislative Analyst Office. I believe you should have our handout uh, in your binders. If not, I believe the sergeant will be coming around with them as well. Um, so we're here today to give you uh, an overview of the cigarette tax initiative. Um, if you move to the first page of our handout, just a little bit about our office's role in the initiative process. Once an initiative is submitted, our office is tasked to work with the Department of Finance uh, to write a letter that describes the a non, excuse me, an impartial letter that describes the initiative and the fiscal impact on state and local governments. A summary of the fiscal impact is circulated when the initiatives go out to collect signatures. Once the uh, measure collects sif signif uh, sufficient signatures for the ballot, our office is tasked with writing the impartial ballot analysis, and we are required to include a description of the measure and its fiscal effects in that analysis. We are currently in the process of doing this work. Moving to the second page, a quick summary of the measure. The measure would increase the tax on a pack of cigarettes by $2. So the tax would go from $0.87 cents currently to $2.87. There would be an equivalent increase on the tax of other tobacco products like cigars. And the measure would extend uh, the excise taxes on tobacco products to electronic cigarettes for the first time. The majority of the revenue generated under the measure would go towards additional spending on the state's Medi-Cal program. Moving to page three, some background on the measure. The measure uh, affects three types of products. The first is cigarettes. The second are other tobacco products, including cigars um, and chewing tobacco and that sort of thing. And the last are electronic cigarettes, which are battery-operated devices that turn specially designed liquid into vapor to be inhaled by the user. There are currently excise taxes on cigarettes and other tobacco products. The uh, tax on cigarettes is $0.87 cents per pack, as I mentioned, and the tax on other tobacco products is $1.37, equivalent to a, a pack of cigarettes. There are also federal excise taxes on cigarettes, right now about $1 per pack. There are no state or federal excise taxes on electronic cigarettes currently. All three products, however, are um, affected by sales and use taxes. So all products, all of these products currently are subject to the 7.5 to 10% sales taxes across the state. Right now, the average sales tax rate is about 8.5%. So moving to page four, some additional background on the programs that would receive funding under the measure. As I mentioned, the majority of the funding would go to Medi-Cal, which is the state's Medicaid program, serving roughly 13 million low-income Californians. Uh, and the budget for the program last year was about $95 billion between state and federal funds. The funding would also go to many public health programs. Generally, local governments provide uh, many of the state's public health programs, but the state provides funding through federal and special funds for oversight and leadership in these programs. Some information on smoking trends in California. Over the past few decades, the uh, smoking rates have been declining, though more recently we've seen um, a bit of a slowdown uh, in that rate, or in that decline. Particularly in 2013, the most recent data we have, about 12% of Californians uh, smoke cigarettes. Electronic cigarettes are uh, more are quite new products, and we don't have very good historical trend data on the usage. I'll also just note two changes to federal and state law recently. So as you are likely aware, in the par as part of the special session on health care, the legislature passed and the governor signed a package of tobacco-related legislation. However, none of, this uh, none of this legislation directly affects the taxes on the products under the measure. 
In addition, recently the U.S. Food and Drug Administration ruled that the existing food, Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, which gives the FDA authority to regulate various products, applies to electronic cigarettes. So now electronic cigarettes will come under the jurisdiction um, of the F Federal FDA. Moving to page five, some more details on the proposal. The proposal raises the tax from $0.87 cents to $2.87 per pack of cigarettes and raises the equivalent tax on other tobacco products by the same amount, from $1.37 currently to $3.37. The measure changes the definition of other tobacco products to include electronic cigarettes, thereby extending the tax on other tobacco products to those products. The measure specifies the distribution of funds generated by the measure, which I'll go over on the next page. Lastly, the measure exempts the revenues from the state spending limit or the GAN limit, as well as um, Proposition 98 funding spending, excuse me, education funding requirements. So moving to page six, um, this chart walks through how the revenues from the measure will be spent. The measure actually lays out a series of steps uh, to allocate the funding. So the first uh, step under the measure would be to backfill the existing tobacco tax funds. So increases in tobacco tax rates typically result in de decreases in usage. So the measure specifies that the existing funds that receive uh, funding from the existing tobacco taxes would be backfilled under the measure. The measure also says that state and local governments would receive a backfill for any losses in uh, sales tax revenue as a result of the measure. 5% of the uh, revenues collected would go to the Board of Equalization for administration of the initiative. Um, and then there are a series of specified amounts for various state entities, including $48 million for enforcement across various agencies, $40 million uh, to the University of California for physician training, and $30 million uh, to the Department of Public Health, uh, particularly to the state dental program. The remainder of the funds uh, are allocated proportionally based on what is left. And as you can see, 82% of the remaining funds would go to Medi-Cal um, to increase the level of payment for healthcare services and treatment to Medi-Cal enrollees. So moving on to page seven, what are the fiscal effects of the measure? Overall, the measure would um, generate over $1 billion, and I'll go over uh, the chart that explains uh, how the monies would be allocated in just a moment. Um, and it would result in over a billion dollars, um, mostly for the state health programs. The net long-term impact on state and local, gov local government's health care costs is unknown, however. So in the chart on page seven, you can see we have a low range and a high range for the revenues generated under the measure. This reflects the range of consumer responses we may see from the measure. So as I mentioned, increases in tobacco taxes will decrease um, purchases of those products. As a result, we, to, uh, to reflect uh, the unknown in terms of where uh, consumers may fall, we have a low range and a high range uh, scenario under the measure. In either case, you can see that the additional revenue gen generated for the Medi-Cal program would range from $700 million to, to a about a $1 billion. Moving to page eight, uh, we have been asked to uh, raise or discuss two issues raised by stakeholders regarding the language in the measure, which the Board of Equalization will be speaking to in just a minute. Particularly, there are two statutory interpretation issues in the measure. The first is that there are two potential definitions of electronic cigarettes, which are listed here on page eight, and or uh, uh, written out here on page eight in the handout. The first definition, which is in um, the definition of other tobacco products, defines electronic cigarettes as any device sold in combination um, with liquid containing nicotine or the sale of liquid containing nicotine individually. The second definition uh, would uh, actually apply a broader set of products or have a broader set of products fall under uh, the measure's definition of electronic cigarettes. The second statutory interpretation issue uh, has to do with the potential for an additional $2 tax on electronic cigarettes um, as levied on, on other tobacco products in Proposition 10, um, which would bring the total excise tax on electronic cigarettes to $5.37 under the measure. The Board of Equalization will be speaking uh, to how they would implement these two issues. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions from the committee? 
Mr. Ridley Thomas? Oh, I'm sorry, like Dr. Pan. Dr. Pan. He hasn't spoken yet. Go ahead, Dr. Pan. Uh, th thank you so very much uh, for uh, your analysis of the initiative. Um, I I know that you brought up a couple of issues, which I understand we'll be hearing from the Board of Equalization, because I do have to, maybe I'll ask, I'll wait for the Board of Equalization to explain. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how um, we would end up uh, doubling uh, uh, the total excise tax on e-cigarettes to 537. That that seems to be a bit puzzling to me how that would happen. I mean, it's pretty clear initiative. Um, actually, well, what, why don't you give your explanation for that, or should I wait for BOE? Sure, sure. So it's been raised by stakeholders that um, the Which stakeholders. Can you specify who? Um, in our various meetings with, with different parties as we work on the initiative, that the language that's listed here on page 8 that states such regulations shall, impose, shall include imposition of an equivalent tax on any device. There have been those who have believed that that language is similar to the language in Proposition 10, which did levy an additional tax on other tobacco products, such that cigarettes under that measure um, uh, were levied a 50 cent tax and other tobacco products were, le uh, there was an additional 50 cents tax, so $1. Um, and in our conversations with various parties, we have not seen the languages reading that way, but the Board of Equalization okay. will speak to how they will implement the measure. Okay, but, but certainly we'll, uh, based on what you've testified here today, the Board of Equalization will be the one to figure that out. That's they correct. They're tasked with implementing okay. the, re the okay. measure, yes. Okay, and then the other other point I just want to make is I know that you gave on the background the smoking trends, mm -hmm. and um, you just sort of said that, well, you know, e-cigarettes are relatively new products. Um, yes, they are relatively new products, but there is data on their use, and I think we need to acknowledge that data um, uh, uh, so there is data from the Centers for Disease Control. Uh, in 2011, 1.5% uh, of high school students used e-cigarettes. Uh, in 2014, it's actually 13.4%, which represents 2 million youth. So, and it's actually now the most commonly used tobacco product among youth. So to me, that's pretty significant. So to simply say we don't have data on it is, I think, disingenuous. Um, I, I know it's probably not your intention, but um, we, well, yes, it is a new product. It is, it is a significant product in terms of use. In fact, it is the leading tobacco product that's being used by our youth, and I think that needs to be acknowledged. I, I, I'm sorry, I should have clarified. We don't have historical trend data similar to that that we have for cigarette use. We right. have the last few years. Well, well yes. yes, but uh, yes, it is a relatively new product, but the, the, the speed of its growth, I think, yes. it needs to be acknowledged. And not merely dismissed as we don't have much, any data because it's only been around for a few years. I mean, the, the fact that it's gone from non existent um, uh, because it hasn't been invented yet to now the leading tobacco product. Is something that definitely, I mean, it'd be, it's a, it surpasses conventional cigarettes. So, I mean, I think that that needs to be acknowledged, not simply saying we don't have any, you know, we don't have historical data. There. That, this is, sure. Yeah. Okay. So, it's only I, background. For okay. The purposes I, of the yeah, measure. but I think it's important background because people need to understand this because this initiative is about our youth, in many ways, um, and in fact, um, uh, you know, in fact, even more recent data, and again, this cross, it, it shows that. Uh, youth who use e-cigarettes are much more likely to then use conventional cigarettes. So this all crosses and impacts with each other. I think it's, good. it's very relevant to why the initiative is, is being proposed. So, so, I mean, it'd be one thing if it was a product that not many used and there wasn't that many, but the fact that it's gone from basically invented to this uh, to to the most the leading tobacco product I think is something that uh, hopefully will you know it should should be acknowledged and recognized. Uh, this is a rapidly growing market, and that's and I don't know what it is for 2016 now, but uh, uh, this is based on uh, data from um, that was collected by the National Youth Tobacco National Youth Tobacco Survey. So uh, it's a standardized measure for for assessing youth uh, tobacco mm -hmm. use by youth. Mm -hmm. So okay, well thank thank you so very much. I think uh, Assemblymember really Thomas had a question. Sure, a couple. Uh, very quickly, it appears that uh, multiple state agencies would receive funds to operate similar programs, particularly DOJ, 
uh, the Office of the Attorney General, which is a joint effort, uh, the Department of Public Health, uh, at BOE, and some local law enforcement. Does LAO have suggestions for uh, one ways to uh, direct those different departments to work in complement? And uh, whether or not you have an answer to that, if the if these are kind of duplicative processes, is there anything in the initiative that stipulates uh, what happens if the money just sits with the state departments? Is it rolled over, or is, it, is the initiative silent on what happens with those funds? Uh, I believe the initiative is, is silent as to uh, what would happen if there were unused monies in any particular year. Um, the measure is specific in terms of what each state department should do with the funds received in terms of giving grants to locals, using it for reducing um, sales to minors, reducing um, illegal sales, those sorts of things. But there is discretion within each department how they would allocate those resources across those various activities. But the measure is specific to what activities the funds should be used for. And they are different is written in the measure in your opinion? They are. Uh, this appeared to be substantially similar. In some cases, the state agencies have different roles in the particular aspects of um, enforcement in terms of reducing sales to minors versus um, tobacco cessation, tobacco cessation programs, that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, in the high and low range, did you take into account any uh, information on the underground economy and what uh, inc increased uh, tax on uh, cigarettes? or similar items might have um, on the growth in the underground economy? Uh, we, di we did um, consider, well, two, there are two, I think, aspects to that question. One, um, there's, as you were just raising, additional revenue for uh, enforcement and to mitigate illegal sales. So to some extent, the additional revenues to mitigate illegal sales could bring in additional excise tax revenue, but we don't have sufficient data to know the extent to which um, that that might occur. Oh, you, you you hadn't looked at just the underground economy with respect to like cigarette stamps currently and the like. We did. We had um, we had various conversations with the board of equalization as to the extent of illegal sales occurring uh, in in the state, and our revenue estimates um, reflect our estimates for the sales of of uh, legally purchased tobacco products. I'd point your attention to a 2013 American Journal of Public Health study that looked at uh, increase in excise cigarette taxes in the city of New York uh, and looked at the adult behaviors associated with um, uh, the, uh, the activity, difference being that I think that the average pack of uh, cigarettes in New York is at $12.50, whereas average pack currently in California is at 6 so it may not be entirely um, uh, at applicable, but it would it, it would be worth, I think, uh, for, for the benefit of the Committee on Revenue and Taxation, appreciating if there's any data that might uh, inform our perspective and what we'll anticipate should this measure pass with respect to tax avoidance. And, and one additional thing to consider is, is with those types of studies, uh, particularly those that occur on the East Coast, is that it is much easier for individuals to cross into other states or other jurisdictions to purchase cigarettes for their personal use, whereas in California, um, our population centers are quite a fair distance from the borders in a lot of cases, or the majority of the population is relatively far from the borders, so the ease of illegal sales is, is somewhat more challenging in California compared with uh, the eastern seaboard. Um, yeah, uh, last question. Um, with the uh, age being raised to 21, you said that the package that passed in the special session did not affect uh, this particular measure. Wouldn't the age affect this measure? So th the raising the legal age for purchase of tobacco to products to 21 will have long-term impacts on the revenue raised uh, by the measure. Um, I by saying that the package of legislation d does not affect the measure, my comments were specific to the tax components. So none of the pieces of legislation increased the tax or broadened um, the basket of products that are affected by um, excise but it, taxes. But it, it, yes, there will be long-term impacts. Right? Hmm? It, it, so do, do you know what it would have been had the um, age not been raised? 
uh, what the base might have potentially been, your, your high and low range? Uh, our high, I, uh, be, given that our high and low range is only for the first year of implementation, 2017-18, and given the, the uh, uh, wide range that we've used in this particular uh, estimate, we don't anticipate that there, we, these numbers take into account any impacts from a slightly smaller population of potential buyers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Is there any other questions or comments? Seeing no other questions or comments from any of the members, we're going to move on to item. Thank you very much. I appreciate it for the uh, update from the LAO's office. We're going to move on to item number three, Board of Equalization. Uh, we have Stephen Smith, Tax Council. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, please proceed. Uh, we only have you as the individual presenting. If you can introduce who else is with you and who will be speaking. Good afternoon, committee members. I'm Steve Smith from the BOE Legal Department, and I have with me Randy Silva from our Investigations Division and Cindy Wilson from our Legislative Division. We've been asked to address two points, whether the initiative contains more than one definition for electronic cigarettes and whether the initiative would create a double tax on electronic cigarettes. The initiative contains only one definition for electronic cigarettes and it's provided in section three of the initiative, the section that provides all definitions. The initiative defines electronic cigarettes to mean a device or delivery system sold in combination with nicotine or liquid nicotine. Some form of nicotine is required to be part of the sale in order for the product sold to meet the definition of an electronic cigarette. Section 4 of the initiative does not create a, defini a different definition for electronic cigarettes. In fact, that section plainly states that the definition for electronic cigarettes is provided in Section 3. Section 4 of the initiative merely provides that BOE must adopt regulations to explain how tax applies to the sale of electronic cigarettes and to the sale of component parts of electronic cigarettes. And this leads to our second point, which is that the initiative does not create a double tax on electronic cigarettes. The initiative would change current law to treat electronic cigarettes as a tobacco product and to tax electronic cigarettes like any other tobacco product. There is no language in the initiative that would impose a standalone tax on electronic cigarettes, in addition to taxing e-cigarettes as a tobacco product. The initiative does say that BOE shall adopt regulations to implement an equivalent tax on electronic cigarettes. And to explain what is meant by the equivalent tax, cigarettes are currently taxed to 87 cents a pack. In other words, cigarettes aren't taxed at a rate, but rather at a fixed amount per cigarette, regardless of the cost of the cigarette. Tobacco products, on the other hand, are taxed at a rate. Statutes provide that tobacco products are taxed at a rate that is equivalent to the combined rate of tax imposed on cigarettes. Each year, BOE performs a calculation to determine what rate of tax for tobacco products would make tobacco tax equivalent to the cigarette tax. Effective July of this year, the rate of tax on tobacco products will be 27.3% of the wholesale cost. If electronic cigarettes become taxed as tobacco products, they will be taxed at the same rate as any other tobacco product. But electronic cigarettes have some unique characteristics that are different from other tobacco products. An electronic cigarette can be deconstructed and the component parts can be sold separately. Mm -hmm. What the initiative instructs BOE staff to do is to develop regulations clarifying how the tobacco equivalency tax applies to electronic cigarettes. For example, I would expect the BOE staff may further clarify when a device or delivery system is considered to be sold in, com in combination with any liquid or substance containing nicotine. But to repeat, the initiative does not create a double tax on electronic cigarettes. It merely instructs BOE to work through how the equivalency tax that applies to all tobacco products, uh, 
will work in the case of electronic cigarettes. Finally, I'd note that the initiative contains a provision that allocates the revenues raised by the initiative to a newly created fund. This provision explains that revenues raised by the $2 increase on cigarettes go into the fund as well as the uh, revenues from the equivalency increase on tobacco products. But there is no allocation of revenue from a double taxation on electronic cigarettes, and BOE staff believes that is because there is no double tax on electronic cigarettes. We'd be happy to answer any questions the committee may have. Thank you. I'm assuming no one else will be presenting. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, any questions? Yes, uh, Assembly Member Really Thomas. Yes. Um, so, in the component parts, and I seem to recall over the last two years, it's kind of complicated to track where all the component parts are coming from because they're so typically online and not used via the United Parcel Service with respect, whether well, the uh, USPS rather, the Postal Service. Um, is that a part of what we might see in the underground economy that uh, BOE uh, so aggressively uh, uh, monitors and tries to change behavior with? When I was referring to the component parts, I was referring to the language in subdivision B of section 301.30.51, and it talks about the BOE will have to adopt regulations explaining how the equivalency tax applies when the delivery device is sold together with the nicotine and how the equivalency tax would apply when they're sold separately or as a package. I'm reading from the statute, any component, part, or accessory of such a device. So, you know, the electronic cigarettes are new to us. It's not something we've ever had any, you know, aside from sales tax, it's not something that's been an excise tax issue for us. So we haven't worked through yet. But but you have, so you do, but you, because of the sales tax, you do have some idea about components, correct? Idea of how many are moving through the state. Those, it's largely uh, unscrutinized? That wouldn't be separately reported to us. When someone reports sales tax, they don't report what they sold. Oh, they just know. report total amounts. We might learn that through audit of okay. a business that sells electronic cigarettes. For a larger, for a larger institution, including out-of-state businesses. I assume that some of these are pretty large out-of-state operations. Yeah, I don't think we know at BOE how, much, how many e-cigarettes are sold by mail order or by Internet. Okay. Um, um, might it is it allowable as you see in the um, in the um, initiatives drafted for the legislature to uh, potentially uh, either come up with statute or a potential prescribed way of getting to the uh, taxation of component parts, or is it really solely the jurisdiction of the BOE as indicated in the um, the um, initiative? The way I read the initiative right now, it says that electronic cigarettes are taxed as a tobacco product, and tobacco product is redefined to include electronic cigarettes when the delivery device is sold in combination with the nicotine or liquid nicotine. So the way the statute reads now, I think if you sold a battery, for example, that powered an electronic cigarette. The way I read it is if that's completely unrelated to the sale of any liquid nicotine, the excise tax wouldn't apply. Now, if they're sold together, you know, and there could be gray areas depending on the facts, if they're sold in a package together, I'd say we'd, we would probably conclude they're in combination with. Um, but. I don't know if that's addressing your your question or not. But it, it, it's, it's getting it's getting in the same vicinity. So these are these are uh, difficult issues. Last question: um, the uh, backfills, two backfills. I think one in in uh, prop what ninety ninety nine or something like that, and prop ten. Uh, they're different backfills than that which is prescribed in this uh, measure. Is this a measure? Uh, potentially more effective or efficient? Um, uh, does it make sense? Will there be any uh, state liability as a result that a state general fund 
uh, hit as a result uh, if the backfields don't uh, meet their goals and targets? Yes, so the Board of Equalization annually will conduct or um, determine the backfill amounts if there's any reduction in the, in the tax. And we would backfill the Prop 99 fund, Prop 10, um, breast cancer fund, and also the general fund. And local, or is that covered by Prop 99 and Prop 10? Are there, are there not local cigarette taxes? Not that we deposit Oh, that's to. right, that's right, okay. Oh, so it's only with the state deposits? Right. Okay. And if, and, and if uh, this were an effective scheme to reduce cigarette consumption, um, there's no burden on the state, that is the state general fund, or obligation to backfill the programs, correct? Right, okay. that's correct. Thank you. Any other, yes, Senator Pan. No, I just want to thank you so much for your testimony, and I understand as the LAO finishes their report on the initiative, I hope they will incorporate what you have stated here today and to clarify the issues that they raised uh, in their testimony as well. Thank you so much. And I will turn it over to the chair. more questions okay seeing none thank you very much appreciate it we will now move on to uh, proponents Thank you. 